In today's show, we look back at Wednesday in the NBA. Big performances, punch-ons, injury news, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So we're here to look at the games on Wednesday. We're going to talk about injury updates for Alexei Pokashevsky and for Devin Booker. And then we're going to talk about the, the well, I got chastised for calling it a brawl, but a brawl between the Pistons and the Magic in that game. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Devin Booker's out at least four weeks. Remember, at least four weeks. This, to me, feels five to six rather than four. But I don't know that. But we're, we're talking at least four weeks with a re-aggravation or an aggravation. Got to get that out of my vocabulary. An aggravation of a groin injury. We'll talk more about what we saw in today's game, but what I said in the two earlier shows today is that Landry Shaman is the guy that I still want. It's not Dwayne Washington. It's not Jock Landale. Yeah, Tory Craig, maybe, but shaman has got the highest upside out of that group, and I still stick by that he is the guy to try and grab and see where it goes. He, I, I'm not confident in him at all, but I still, still think he's the guy. Campaign probably behind him. We'll talk about that. And we look through that Suns game later on today. Rowan Barrett's out at least a week with a finger laceration. Quickly's the guy. Yes, they theoretically should play Cam Reddish, but they probably won't. And we still don't know the update on Brunson. So there's Quickly, uh, Gr- there's Grimes, then there's Quickly, then there's McBride, and then maybe they try Reddish. But that would be the order of prioritization. I wouldn't add Reddish in 12, so no way. But I probably wouldn't add McBride there. But Quickly and Grimes, I would. Both Devin Vassell and the horse, Keldon Johnson. Whose horse is that? They're both questionable for tomorrow. Hopefully, they're both ready to go. But if they're out, then you look at Bates Diop. You look at Sohan. Obviously, he's a really strong ad at the moment with some strong form. Um, Maybe Malachi Branham steps in there. But the Spurs rotation is going to be a mess, it feels like, all season. Big Dick Nick Richards is out. So Mark Williams provides that slightly deeper league stream value. And Kelly Oubre is doubtful. So Jalen McDaniels pushes into some stream value for tomorrow. And we got some bad news on Alexei Pokyshevsky. Obviously, you can drop him. But he has a leg fracture in the tibial plateau. That's six to eight weeks. You know, so we're talking maybe February that he returns there. Um, obviously, we're not holding him in 10 or 12 or 14 team leagues. As for who replaces him, I, I don't know. Robinson Earl is out. They started the second half last game with Muscala there. Um, they will, can also start Eugene Omarui in that position. They can start Darius Baisley in that position or... They could start Pig Williams. I don't think that Omarui or Muscala or Baisley or Pig Williams are going to be 12-team options. And I think it's going to be just a back and forward consistently in terms of who gets the minutes and who gets the production. Muscala's probably got the most fantasy-friendly game, followed by Jalen Williams. The Pig, not the Bronco. The Broncos should be rostered in 12-team leagues anyway in most spots. You know my thoughts on him. The Pig Williams could jump up into some larger minutes as well. But those four guys, none of them are very good. And they're going to be all up and down and all over the place in terms of rotation minutes replacing Poku. And Poku wasn't a guy we wanted rostered anyway. So the guy that replaces him, what makes me think we want to roster him? Probably nothing. In fact, I don't think there's going to be a 12-team league pickup there. But that is news. News in Toronto, Van Vliet with his back issue is questionable. Maybe that opens up a Malachi Flynn stream for at least a game. It does definitely help Gary Trent's value. And we've also got Precious Achua maybe returning in Toronto, which I think is going to finally silence Wanchohan and Gomez. And not that Precious is a 12-team addict because he isn't, but maybe he becomes like a 14-team points league guy, maybe, if he plays. And then we'll talk about it later on in that game, but I want to go through it now with the um, Orlando Magic and the Detroit Pistons where there was a, an altercation. Mo Wagner had a, 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 a dirty bump. 
on Killian Hayes as they were trying to get the ball, knocked him and knocked him into the bench. Yep, not not right. Should have been ejected. No problem with that for Mo Wagner. Get him out of here. In fact, yeah, we'll talk about this later. I think Mo's a drop in 12 team leagues. Um, yeah, that happened, right? Mo's going to get suspended. Then Killian Hayes, then, then Wagner standing there in the bench. Uh, Diallo pushes him in the back. That might draw a suspension as well. And then Killian Hayes comes in with a fist in the back of the neck. And Wagner crumpled. I don't know whether he was unconscious or if he got knocked out, but he definitely laid down in the bench and was sort of just laying there. It didn't look great. He maybe lost consciousness for a second. He was definitely woozy. He didn't look great at all after getting punched in the back of the head. Now that is going to cost, I don't care who started it. I don't, I don't care that Wagner started that on Hayes. because he, he did. He knocked him. It was in play. Yes, it was dirty, right? But it was in play. A rabbit killing punch in the back of the neck is is bad, right? Hayes NBA suspensions are always too lenient. If that happened in a game here in the AFL in, in Australian football, that's that's five weeks, which is like you have eighteen games of, of NBA basketball. He might get three games. Like he he might get three three four games. I think he's got to be minimum three games here for Killian Hayes. Um, maybe five. I hope I. Yeah, I like Killian Hayes. I think you should get more. It's a dirty, it's a dirty act, right? That that sort of thing, punching someone in the back of the neck is, is dirty. And yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't great to watch. The other thing we got to watch is the Magic. All of their players who left the bench are subject to an automatic one game suspension. Those players are Cole Anthony, Franz Wagner, Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter Jr., Gary Harris. Admiral Schofield and RJ Hampton. The only guys that I couldn't see moving to that bench or moving off that bench was Terrence Ross and the guys who were on the court at the time of the incident. Markel Fultz, Paulo Bonquero, Bol Bol, and Caleb Houston. They went over to the scuffle. They were on the court, so they don't get that automatic suspension. Now, if all of those guys miss time, including Isaac, and we know a KK is out, and if Jalen Suggs remains out with his um, ankle injury, the Magic don't have enough players to field a team. In the past, that happened, I think it was Heat Knicks in the 90s. What they had to do is they had to stagger the suspension. So half the guys get suspended one game, half the guys get suspended the other game. So given there's just so much unknown here, I don't. there's going to be streaming options. I can't tell you who it is, but I can tell you that Cole Anthony, Franz Wagner, Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter, Gary Harris, Admiral Schofield, RJ Hampton, Mo Wagner, and Kavon Harris are all subject to suspensions. All of those guys are subject to suspensions. When they happen... If they get suspended, I don't know. I, I guess they will. They left the bench. It should be in a suspension. Whether that's right or not, that's not the debate here. That's just what happened. Or that's what the rule is. So there is going to be weird streaming situations open up for the Magic. But the guys who probably won't get one, Bunkero, Fultz, Bowl, and Houston. Although some have speculated that Bunkero and Fultz, because they went into the Pistons bench area, despite being on the court, might be getting one as well. So th- all those guys get the, who get the automatic suspension, it's one game. So we're not looking at long-term value. It's just once we find out what's going on, then we look at a stream on that day. But I thought that was important to go through now just to talk about the outcome of that. On the Detroit side, we'll talk about it when we get into that game in just a second. Today's episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. If your New Year's goals are to manage your budget better and to save money, you need Rocket Money. Say goodbye to last year's outdated, disorganized methods of managing your money. Say hello to Rocket Money, the better way to hack your finances in 2023. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower you your bills, all in one place. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click as a button. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on NBA. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on NBA. Rocketmoney.com slash locked on NBA. Rocket, rocket, rocket. We can't think. We can't think. Sorry, right. Right. Come, on, come on, come on, come on. All right. So let's look at the question of the day. Haven't done this one in a while. Let's do it now. This player was drafted out of Arizona. He's an Arizona Wildcat. He was drafted by the Portland Trailblazers. And the last team he played for was the Portland Trailblazers. Drafted by the Blazers out of Arizona. Last team played for was the Portland Trailblazers. Drop your comments in the chat or in the comments below and tell me what the answer is. We'll get to that later on in the show. 
Let's have a look at this first game then. It was the Magic and the Pistons. We already highlighted what happened with that suspension situation or that you know, alleged, well, not alleged, potential, likely suspension situation. On the Magic side of things, it's it's yeah, it wasn't wasn't good stuff from them. They lost by twenty points. One thing is pretty clear though that Wendell Carter needs to start. Twenty four minutes, sixteen and eight, wasn't great from the line. In fact, it was bad from the line, but fifty percent shooting. Um, this is your clear, I think, very very clear indication that you can move on from Mo Wagner. Carter was able to play twenty four minutes. Mo Wagner is going to get suspended. So is Wendell probably, um, but. Next game, Mo's going to be playing 20 minutes. You can get rid of him. You don't need to hold on to him. See you later. Um, Marco Fultz, only six points on 17%, but seven rebounds, nine assists, and a steal. Still hold him. Cole Anthony, eight points only, but five rebounds, six assists, a steal, and two blocks. That's good. Maybe he is a 12-team league. I'm not super convinced, but that's a good line. And then we go down to guys like Gary Harris, who played 22 minutes, and Bowl played only 25 minutes, despite Mo Wagner getting ejected. Had 11 and 6 with no other supporting stats. Mo, uh, Bol Bol is 163rd over the last week. He's 118th in points leagues on the season. You do not have to roster Bol in a points league. In a 10-team points league, you can get rid of him. In a 12-team points league, I think you can drop him. In a 10-team category league, I'd feel pretty okay about dropping him. And in a 12-team points le- uh, category league, I think he can be a drop. But he's one of the guys that isn't going to get suspended. So, they're, oh, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely not. He didn't even go over to the bench. He just stood in the middle of the court and what are these idiots doing? Which, you know, fair enough. He just stood there. And I guess, I guess some might say, fair enough, you're, you're not getting yourself suspended. Or other people might go, why aren't you helping your teammates? I can see both, both sides of that. But Bowl is not going to get suspended. I can guarantee you that. So he might have an opportunity where Carter and Wagner and Bumba are out. One or two of those guys out on back-to-back days, which boosts his value. So... Before you go ahead and drop, hold for these two games, see what they do, and maybe you can convince someone into a sell high. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know that you can, but maybe you can. In Detroit, Hayes is getting suspended. There's no two ways around that. Diallo, maybe. And we've got two guys that really stepped up. One of them was the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay. 35 minutes, 28 and 8, six triples, a steal and a block on 50% shooting. Usage was great. He actually played really well in this game. He seems to do well against Orlando. He closed the game over Isaiah Stewart. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't love Sadiq Bay as a player. I guess that's a shock to you. Did you know that? I don't think he's that great. I, I think they should start him at power forward over Isaiah Stewart because Isaiah Stewart's not a power forward. He's not a center. He's a nobody. He's a, I'll tell you who Isaiah... Sorry, Isaiah. Isaiah Stewart's Montrez Harrell. That's really what his upside is in the league, I think. Better defender, worse offensive player. Modern NBA, Sadiq Bay is who you want to be your power forward. I, I don't know why they made... I do because Dwayne Casey's a coach. But they made that decision to go with Stewart there. And we got big minutes out of Bay here. Closing the game. Not Nothing to do with the Hayes suspension, I don't think. Noth- or the Hayes ejection. Nothing to do with it. He closed over Stewart. So that makes him a little bit more appealing. Now, even when he was starting earlier in the season, he wasn't really a 12-team league guy. But you could have a look at him. Alec Burks is the beneficiary, the guy that gets the big bump, I think. Alec Burks. 30 minutes for him, 32 points on 91% shooting. So straight away, we know it's fake. Hit six threes, had four assists, two steals, and a block. But 30 minutes of a high usage Alec Burks is streamable. Both of those guys can be added. I think Burks is probably the, the one for the short term. Whereas I could see Bay overtaking Stewart later in the year, which gives him a little bit of upside, especially for 14s. But I'm not convinced that he's a must roster 12, irrespective of starting or bench status. Jaden Ivey had foul trouble. That's why he only was able to play 28 minutes. He had eight points on another stinking shooting night, 14%. He had six rebounds and four assists, a steal and a block, and remains absolutely not a must-roster 12-team league player. Points leagues, yes. Category leagues, no. Must-roster in 12-team points, must or not must-roster in 12-team category. Uh, Bogdanovich had 14 points, rough night from him. While Stewart had 11 in 27 minutes. You don't, you don't need to have Isaiah Stewart in 12 10 leagues. In fact, Get that garbage out of here. deeper leagues are going to have to, unfortunately, pay attention to Corey Joseph because he is going to get minutes because Dwayne Casey's coaching this team. Let's go on to the next game. It is the Wizards smashing the Suns, 127 102. I talked about this ad nauseum. Dwayne Washington, he has done this before. Big games, and then he disappears. So Dwayne Washington in this game had 10 points in only 17 minutes on 33% shooting because, let's again, he is not that good. He's a two-way contract guy who can have these big games. This is why, even though he was out for this game, why I prefer Shamit. 
And this is why, even though he was out for this game, I'd prefer Payne over Washington. When we're talking about long-term, people have some very short-term views of things. Like I posted this, you know, hey, shame it's a stream. Hey, but he's out. Yeah, he is. But Booker might literally miss six weeks here. So one game of nothing performances, or let me grab Shaman and see what happens. That's how I think you should view that. Aiden had 31 and 7. That was good. Chris Paul, 22 and 7. Two steals, two blocks. A great game for him. While Mikael Bridges, guess what? Shot poorly. This is just a common theme. He really struggles when Booker's not there. But he had 17 points. The volume was great. The 40 minutes is insane. Five assists, two steals, and a block. They started Jack Landale. 16 minutes for him, five points, two shots, and he got benched at halftime for Akogi. You don't need to have Jock Landale in a 12-team league. While Akogi had just three points, he's not a 12-teamer either. Damian Lee showed the closest to being that, eight points, but that's not great. While Tory Craig played 29 minutes and had five and five. I think Craig probably is a 12-team guy, but it's not great. Like, it's a guy that you have at the end of your roster, and you go, oh, maybe, maybe. And then you, you're better off cycling through Craigs and Lees, and Shamit might be that guy. But he's at least shown a little bit more spark than these other players. And I, I, I don't love Landry Shamit as a player. But if I'm taking a flyer on someone, it is him to see what he's able to do. But the Wizards, Rui Hachimura, it's a great game. We knew that there'd be a little bit more usage for him with Beal out, but he double whammied it. Not only did he get more usage, but he shot 85% from the field, which of course is not real. 30 points, five rebounds, one assist. In true Rui style, five rebounds and one assist doesn't cut it. He only hit one three. And if he, instead of going, what did he what did he shoot here? 11 of 13. If, say, he goes 6 of 13, then he has 20 points with 5 rebounds, which is still okay. It's not ideal, though. Maybe it's 18 points. You know, it's not great. It's okay. With Beal out, maybe, but I, I honestly don't think he's a 12-team pickup. Again, if you want short-term points boost, no problem. But long-term, no. Don't think so. Um, all right. What else on this game? Dylan Wright. This is what he is, steel streamer. He got three of them and played 15 minutes. I think it's a long way before he gets 25 minutes, which is what I would need to see before he becomes an absolute must-roster player. But those steals are good. While Avdia was on a bit of a limit, according to his coach on the back-to-back, eight and seven in 27 minutes. But they went again with Daniel Gafford starting. Now, Avdia has a value to boost if Beal is out, but only if he starts. If they're going to go big with Gafford, but Gafford's the ad. 14 and, ad three, 14 and eight, three blocks. That's a 12-team ad. I don't know if Bill's going to remain out, but even if he does come back, they're seemingly sticking with Gafford for the time being. So I would rather add Gafford over Wright and over Avdia. I'm never touching Corey Kiss, but never. I don't care that Bill's out. He just is never... I can't say that. I was going to say he's never going to be good. I can't say he's never going to be good. I don't really foresee it in the near-term future. Seven points in 28 minutes for Corey Kispert, starting for Beal. Monte Morris value always goes up when Beal's out. 12, 6, and 8 in 31 minutes. And Porzingis had 22 and 6. And Kuzma had 22, 5, and 7. Good games from those two blokes. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nitsa. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few become a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end, people start to head out. You think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home. It's no big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Let's go to the next one. Nets get the win over the Hawks by one point. 108-107, the final score here in Atlanta. Durant just doing his thing. 26-16-8 and eight with two blocks. He's been like just ludicrous this season. And Kyrie, pretty bloody good as well. Now, Kyrie's steals remain absent. But 28-5-8 and eight with five threes, 50% shooting. That's really good. He's a 16th-ranked player on a per-game basis. He was a guy that towards the end of draft season, I was pushing upped into that 13-14 spot. He's not far off that. Nicky Claxton, big game. 16-10 and 10 with six blocks on 89%. He's been great. He's been a top 50 player this season without punting free throws. He's been amazing. He was a guy that in the last update of rankings, Yahoo pushed to about 140. So we were all over that around pick 100, like let's go grab him. And it worked out well. Royce O'Neal, he did have three blocks, um, the Basmati man. But seven and four, one assist, 35 minutes. We're back to, this is who Royce O'Neal is. And this is when, 
Yeah, sometimes I, I can be stubborn with this, with maybe not reacting quickly to these little hot streaks. We'll talk about a guy that plays for the Lakers a little bit later. But I've seen Royce O'Neal play for years. And I know that he has these little runs and he goes, it's just not going to happen long term. As a streamer, as a streamer, basically anyone is fine. All right, they're on a little hot streak, you grab them. But when trying to value these guys long term, I just don't buy that this is real. Because it wasn't. It was like a 20 game little spike for some bloody reason. And he's back to the same bloke. But I, I agree. I don't, I don't know if I agree because I don't know if you're saying it. But I am sometimes slow to react to these things that are happening in the moment. Because, I've, again, I've got a long a longer view on this stuff. I try to have a longer view and see how this, hey, I know this is not going to stick. I know this is not going to stick. And then it stays for 10 games. You go, maybe, maybe he is a six assists per game player. Like, i got no idea why, but maybe he is. Nothing logically adds up there. But here we go. Now we're back to the bullshit when you can drop him. Talked about Tony Warren on multiple shows and said how fake the last game was. Said it's fake. The big shots, the 68% shooting, whatever it was, it's fake. And then he has two points in 26 minutes on five shots on 20%, which is fake the other way. He's not this bad. If you want to have him on a 12-team league, it's totally fine. On a 10-team league, you can do significantly better. He's still going to sit back-to-backs. He's still going to be limited a lot of the time. He'll have some good games, but he's not in that same usage position he was in Indiana. So that's why it always that was you know, important to, to view context. Of, and even Joe Harris still wasn't back in this one, but Seth Curry did come back to play seven minutes for some reason. So again, the Warren as was fine to do when we take flyers on guys, but you know having that level of skepticism. And if you want to drop TJ after this, I don't blame you. Like that's not good. Obviously, obviously not good. Paddy Mills played twelve minutes while Seth Curry played seven. Seth is really bad this season. There's no point having him in 12 or even 14 team leagues. Well, I only got 25 minutes from Ben Simmons, 10, 5, and 2. Not his best night, pretty clearly. He is struggling at times. And um, yeah, it's, it's not a great night. The Hawks were without Clint Capella, Trey Young, and DeAndre Hunter. So they started a lineup that had Aaron Holiday in it, next to DeJounte Murray, uh, Adrian Griffin Jr., John Collins, and Nyeka Okongwu. I don't know when Capella's back, but you've got to have a Okongwu. 18, 13, and three blocks. Until Capella at least returns, you just got to keep going with the Kongwu. DeJounte, sell high on this. 40 minutes, 24, 9, and 8. He, is, he shot 26 times and 39%, but 30 usage, assists up. But you know why? It's because Trey Young was not there. So sell high. If anyone wants to give you a top 20 player for DeJounte Murray, this is absolutely when you accept it. You absolutely need to accept it. Bogdanovich had 14, 2, and 3 with three threes in 29 minutes. Solid enough. He remains a 12 team league guy. Yeah, not not awesome. Four and four for Griffin with two steals. He's not a 12-team league player, but he is rostered in a lot of spots. While Aaron Holiday had 10, three, and three. Nothing great there, and I wouldn't even bother streaming in 12 or 14-team leagues, even if Trey does remain out. The next game was the Lakers and the Heat. The Heat win 112-98. Um, for the Lakers... 27, 9, and 6. Really strong. No defensive stats, but a really strong game. And Troy Brown, 14 points with four threes. That's two games in a row that he's played well. I'm not buying into it at all, but I'm, I think I am buying into Patrick Beverly. Now, I have to be convinced maybe not to, but I think I am. 28 minutes, six points, seven rebounds, four assists, a steal on a block, 29%. Prior to this game, he had been shooting better. He missed both his two pointers here, which is why the numbers were low. But he's top 100 over the last week. And top 90, actually. And we're starting to see him push into being that valuable role player. I think in 14 team leagues, he's an ad and 12, it's borderline. Tom Bryant, only 23 minutes. Remember, keep this in your head. Tom Bryant is not a very good player. He can put up fantasy numbers, but he's not a very good player. So there will be inconsistencies in his production. I still maintain that he's a 12 team must roster and I would not drop him after this game. But if I'm going to double fist, double fist and jack someone, Oh, well, there's two blokes I'm going to jack on this team. Get that garbage out of here! Correction, there's three blokes I'm going to jack on this team. Get that garbage out of here! Dennis is no good. He doesn't fit on this team and he makes no sense on this team. Yes, he had 15 points, but two and two. There's no steals, no blocks. Not good enough. He is the 226th ranked player this season. Not from lack of minutes. Minutes have been fine. See you later. And the next bloke that we're jacking, and this goes back to what I talked about with Royce O'Neal. Hello. Yeah, not hello. See you later. Zero points for Lonnie Walker in 21 minutes because guess what? He's not very good. And what he was doing at the start of the season, shooting like 48% from three and 56% from two or something, is just completely not what he's ever been in his career. 
and now it's coming unstuck and Laker's gone, oh yeah, he's not that good. What else does he do? Like, can you do Can you do something? And he can't. He can't do anything. Good bloke. Not a very good NBA player. Zero points, two rebounds, one assist, 21 minutes. He is now the 163rd ranked player this season, 162nd in points leagues. There is zero excuse, in my opinion, for rostering Lonnie Walker in a 10 or 12 team league. And it's getting bloody close to not being a 14 team league guy. The other guy that I think is droppable is Austin Reeves. I think he's a better player than both Schroeder and um, Walker, but 0.0 rebounds, one assist on 0 of 5 shooting in 20 minutes. See you later. Don't need to hold on to that. Can stream him in if he's playing better, but I don't need to hold on to that. That's that's nonsense. I'll see you later. See you later. See you next time. For the Heat, there was no Kyle Lowry out for personal reasons. That should give everyone pause because last season, he missed like 15 games through personal reasons. And in the offseason, he said, yeah, whatever that personal reason is, which I'm not going to discuss, that's still around. So when this happens, you go, oh no. Oh no. Deeper leagues, go add Gabe Vincent. 31 minutes, 12 points, two threes, two assists and a steal. And you would have thought this would have been a good opportunity for Victor Oladipo. Now he had three steals and two blocks. That's excellent. He had four points on 14% shooting and played just 26 minutes. Really hard to justify him as a must roster 12. He's not. You just you don't have to hold him. Butler had 27, 5, and 4 with six deals. Fantastic. Hero hit the game winner, but he was inefficient. 35, well, not game winner. He hit big shots down the stretch. Sorry, my bad. 18 points with three threes, nine assists, and two steals on 35%. Talked about him on the buy low, sell high show the other day and how he's top 20 over the last two weeks. Well, over the last week, he's actually 70th. And this is what I was talking about. People, I think, misunderstand some of the buy low, sell high stuff. But no way, he's been great for me. That Cool. But unless you think he's going to maintain top 25, top 30 value, then there is a sell high there. If someone offers you that value, you should take it because he's not going to be able to maintain it. No one's denying he hasn't been great, and, and he has been great all season. I think he can maybe have a top 50 season rest, yeah, for the rest of the season. That doesn't mean if someone gives you top 25 that you don't give him up. And yeah, you see that. He just has a few little things fall away, and then the numbers drop off. Orlando Robinson played only nine minutes without a bio back. Bam had 23-14 with two blocks. Bad from the line, three of six, but good numbers overall nonetheless. While Max Struess, yeah, he's still rostered in 12s. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the 198th ranked player this season, Max Struess. He had seven points on 25%. He's hitting 33% of his threes. Like, mate, if you can't hit 40, then you're, not, you're no good. You're not useful to us. Get out, get out of here. Um... Little Chungus played just the 27 seconds as well. Orlando Robinson got the backup center minutes there. Nine minutes for the big fella, Orlando. The next game was an overtime game, and the Bulls beat the Bucks 119-113. Let's talk about Giannis. Giannis and Tentokotoma too. Great numbers. 45, 22, and 7. But why is he brutalizing both of our percentages so regularly? 44% from the field. And 61 from the line on 18 attempts. That is horrific. He had 47 usage, but that other stuff's shocking. Brook Lopez dropped in 14 and 6 in 37 minutes. I can't believe he played 37 minutes. I guess overtime there. With four blocks. And Bob Portis, better, much better game. He'd really struggled. 20 and 11 in 28 minutes with three threes. Nothing else. And inefficient. But he got some extra playing time and touches with both Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday out. They started Javon Carter and Pat Connaughton. And neither of those guys did jack shit. 5-1-0 and zero for Javon Carter, 0-7-2 and two for Connaughton. They are not even 12-team streamers in situations like this. While Grayson Allen had 13 points, three threes. Didn't shoot well, but got really good usage. He is rostered nowhere, Grayson Allen. So he's a great 16-team league guy. He's a solid 14-team league option. And in days like this, there maybe is some 12-team stream. Wes Matthews played an inexplicable 31 minutes for three points with two blocks. He just hadn't been a rotation guy. Well, Ingles, oh, well, barely a rotation guy. Same with George Hill, who'd been out of the rotation. 28 minutes for him. And Joe Ingles played just the 19. They're still ramping him up slowly. Weird to see Marjan Beauchamp, who started about a week ago, um, play only garbage time, really. Just a minute 37 here. For the Bulls, DeRozan, 42, 10, and 5. Two steals and two blocks. That's absolutely a fantastic performance. While Levine had 24, 2, and 4, which is an okay performance. I know it looks good on the surface, but Levine just struggles in so many of those areas that aren't scoring. And then he has 44% shooting on high volume, which actually is a negative as well for fantasy. So while the numbers look good, they're not as good as they appear. We had 38 minutes from Ayo Desumu, Six points on 29%. I don't care to have him in 12 team leagues. He was out of the rotation for a reason. Um, it did help that both Caruso's out, obviously, and then Kobe White went out in this one. So Tazuma's going to get minutes, but minutes for him don't mean production. Vooch had 15 and 14, five assists with three blocks. Didn't shoot well, which he had been doing for a little bit of time, but not a great night there. Well, Drummond did his thing. Now, Andre Drummond is one of the best stat patters of all time. 
16 minutes, 7 points, 13 rebounds, 2 steals, and 2 locks. That's why he was a fantasy star. But he was also literally out of the rotation so that an undersized power forward, Derek Jones, could play those backup minutes because Drummond sucks so much in general. So do not roster Andre Drummond in 12-team leagues despite this big game. And we've got big minutes from Pat Williams. We've got no production, but we've got big minutes. 41 minutes here, in fact. 8-4, and four, steal and a block. The Bulls have that positive schedule over the next few days, or yes, that was starting today, I guess. So that's the reason for his big, well, for the value of, of adding him in 12-team leagues was to get take advantage of this schedule. But, you know, the per-game stuff's not really there. And I'm not sure it's ever going to be there for him. I don't actually think he's got that level of upside to become this, you know, super stud sort of a player. The next game we look at was the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Pelicans. The Pelicans win at 119-118 in the end. There was no Towns, Prince, and McLaughlin, and Kyle Anderson was out. Looks like um, Prince and McLaughlin are still going to be out for the rest of the week at least. Anderson, no update. 38 minutes for Russell, 27, 3, and 4, 2 steals. Just a solid game. While McDaniel is also in the midst of a really strong performance. 19 and 7, 3 assists, 2 steals, and a block. That's three big games in a row. He's top, top 60 over the last week. Big sell high opportunity. If someone wants to give you a top 75, top 80 player, I would take it. Only 29 minutes for Rudy Gobert. He did foul out in this one. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. But the positive thing is he got four blocks. 10 and 8 with four blocks. That's what we have Rudy Gobert for. It's not for assists or big scoring. It's to get me blocks and field goal percentage. He had 80% from the field and four blocks. I can't ask for much more than that. Nazareth Reed, 25 minutes, 13 and 6, two threes, two blocks. While Towns, but more importantly, while Anderson is out, Reed is a 12 team league guy, but I just don't think it's going to last. Like, I don't think there's any way that we can foresee long term value. In fact, it literally might end next game, but we still just roll with him. Austin Rivers, I knew it was bullshit. I knew it. I know I got angry then, but fuck, I knew it. When this dickhead put up like three big games in a row, I went, what do I have to talk about him? Do I have to talk about him? He's usually the worst permanent producer in the NBA. Tony Snell division, and he, he he's back to it. 5-2-2 two, and two in 33 minutes. Yes, we don't have to deal with him in 12-team leagues. Thank absolute God. 27 points for Goose in his 29 minutes with two steals and a block. Rough shooting from both the field and the line, Yana style, but the counting stats there were pretty good, including the defensive stuff. For the Pelicans, no Ingram or no Jones, and then they lost Larry Nance. Let's go to Larry Nance straight away. If you're in a 10 or 12-team points league, Larry Nance can be jacked, not a problem. Not a points league player. In category leagues, I do believe that he was a must roster player. We'll talk about now in a second because of his ability to get steals, blocks, rebounds, and field goal percentage. But if those things don't appeal to you, there's no point in having him. That is what he produces. He's never going to be a high scoring guy. He's never going to hit threes at a high level. He's never going to be this big assist player. Steal, block, six, seven rebounds, 60% plus field goals. That's all what he does. And now he played 16 minutes. He had four fouls. He went scoreless with two rebounds and one assist. And then he got he had to leave the game early due to a neck issue. He didn't look right. He got hit last game as well. If you want to drop him, go right ahead. I still think he can nudge into the top 100 for the rest of the season, but it's very specific, the value he provides. And that's why rankings can also be misleading. His value is very specific. It's these couple of things that he does, and they boost the numbers and the other things that he doesn't do. So there is value in him. Don't think that because someone should be rostered, and he should be by somebody, it doesn't mean he has to be rostered by you if it doesn't make sense. So move on if you need to, not a problem, especially now that he's hurt. Alvarado went from starting to playing 11 minutes for five points. That sucks. Well, Najee Marshall was all right, 12 and seven. He's probably still worth a stream while Ingram and Jones are out. As for the big man in the middle, Jonas Valanciunas, Jonas Vassal in a shot. He had 12 and 11. Just keep holding him. And we're saying with Trey Murphy, who had 21 points, five threes, four assists in 27 minutes. Now, I don't think that Trey will remain a top 100 player. He's 92nd so far this season when players return. But that's fine. We just hold him and we see what develops over that time. And I haven't even mentioned the big fella. Zion dropped in 43 points in 34 minutes. He had five assists. He had a triple one. He shot 67 from the field and he went to the line 19 times. He hit 74% only, so he's actually a significant negative in fantasy. It's a huge negative. But if you have Zion, you're punting free throws. So that is just a stellar, stellar game overall. Christian James McCollum had 20 points with six assists and two steals. He's on a nice little run. He's actually top 20 over the last week. So you just some of that because Ingram, Jones, Murphy, and Zion were out for a couple of games. But he really is take he really did take advantage of it and then kept up some of that form in this game. 
All right, let's do the next game. The Warriors beat the Jazz. 112-107. The final score here for Utah, we had Kelly Linick back, and he started, and Walker Kessler went to the bench. Let's start with Kessler. Does that mean he's a drop? No. He still had three blocks. He had six and six in 20 minutes. It's not a great line. No, no question about it. It's not fantastic, but it's three blocks. It's six rebounds. Two or four is not good. Three or four would have been better. I think he's still, I think he is still a hold and a must roster player. You might disagree. In a points league, I can see that not being the case. In a category league, yeah, I think so. Markinen was great again. He did seem to have a little bit of a problem with his legs. So watch that one. 29 and 16 with seven triples. A um, bit inefficient, but good nonetheless. Well, Vanderbilt played 28 minutes. He had 10 and 9. Nothing too exciting there. He's fine in a 12. He's also fine if you don't have him, I think. The man on the street played 34 minutes, Jordan Clarkson. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. He scored 22 points and didn't do a huge amount else. No defensive stats. Three threes. Well, only 16 minutes for Colin Sexton. 11, 2, and 4. That's not enough. He still remains the fourth guard on this team. Not a 12-team league guy, I don't think. Mike Conley was good last game. Five points on 18% is not good. I am encouraged the fact he took 11 shots. He had 10 assists still. He had a steal. I still think he's a 12-team league guy. While Linick had nine and six, two blocks. Didn't shoot well from either the field or the line. But as you're well aware, I believe he's a 12-team league player. Um, Beasley struggled seven and three, 25%. We know he's up and down. We know his game is based on points and threes. And if that doesn't hit, there's nothing else. So that makes him like the Tim Hardaways and the AJ Griffins at the moment. Those guys who you can consider streamers. And there's a guy in the Kings game that's similar. We'll talk about him a little bit later on. For the Warriors, they were without a bunch of guys. Jermichael Green, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Andrew Wiggins. So we had some weird stuff. We had 39 minutes from Dante DiVincenzo. He was also questionable heading into this game. 19, 4, and 2, 2 steals, 5 threes. I think he's a must roster player for now, but we will assess that once Wiggins is back. Last game, he only scored zero points, but he did have nine rebounds, seven assists, I think it was, and remains a 12 10 league guy while Steph is out. But again, we will reassess that when Wiggins plays. Draymond had six, nine, and five, three blocks. Remember how he couldn't block any shots? Well, they're coming now, which is great. While Milk, Ty Jerome, Mr. 2%. 30 minutes, 17 and seven, two threes. And I tell you now, Outside of me getting off milk jokes, I couldn't give a shit. Like, I just don't care. That's not mattering for any league. They started Tony Lamb. He had 10, 4, and 3. Um, cool. While well, Jordan Poole's inefficiency hurts. 32% shooting. He had 26, but 3 rebounds, 1 assist. He's, like, struggling. He's outside the top 150 over the last week. He's still outside the top 100 for the season. And you would have thought we had a huge boost with that Steph. It hasn't really come because the efficiency's hurting. I also would have thought that John Kaminga got a huge boost here, but not really. Nine, four, and three. Golden State um, reporters were absolutely Danish backhanding. Man, he's so good. Oh, they nailed it. He's going to be all defensive player. Like, okay. But for fantasy, he's just not good, right? He's the 282nd ranked player this season. 252nd in points leagues. Still significantly overrepresented. And I thought he was a solid stream. With no Wiggins, with no Clay, with no Steph. Surely. But I guess not. He's nowhere near it. He's a stream still, but even now I'm like reconsidering whether he's even a 12-team stream when everyone sits. Jim Wiseman played seven minutes. Please do not... James Wiseman, how in our advanced metric is he 14% rostered? How is that possible? There's also a better game from Kevon Looney, 6, 12, and 5. But if you want to talk deeper dynasty stuff, Pat Baldwin, 13 minutes, 11 points, three threes. It's not repeatable. He's not going to play every night. But he showed an ability to be a stretch four. And I think he was part of the reason that Kaminga's minutes were a little bit low. That's just something to watch for Dynasty Leagues, I think. It's nothing too exciting, but it's something to watch. The last game of the night, the Kings. Big, big comeback from Sacramento. They get the win over the Nuggets, 127-126. They look cooked. Then Jokic went to the bench. They got some momentum up, and they came back and got the win. For the Nuggets, there was a bunch of players out. Jamal Murray, Bruce Brown, Aaron Gordon, all out. So they started the five-minute man. Burns Highland. He, in fact, played 33 of them. 20 points, 5 rebounds, 11 assists. Probably his best game of the season. He really clicked playing next to Jokic. But don't look at this and go, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go, Bones. He's, before today, was outside the top 200 for the season. And the real value here is because he played next to Jokic. He'd played under 20 minutes a night. And maybe if Brown is out, he can get a few more. But I wouldn't rush necessarily. I, I can get, I get it. Murray will come back, but I get it. Brown might miss a couple, and maybe we get 24 of night of Highland. This moves him into a strong efficiency little run. 
but I wouldn't overreact. Big Chungus had 47-6 and six with a steal and a block on a back-to-back. That's just a stupid game, really. Like, that is a ludicrously good performance. Well, Maga Porter, 35 minutes for him. 19-7, and seven, four threes and three blocks. Great from Michael Porter Jr. It's two big games in a row. If anyone wants to give me a top 60 player in a trade, I would do it immediately. Just not because I don't think he can be solid, because I think he can. It's more you just have worries about something happening injury-wise, whether it's his back or now his heel or just something. You're always worried about that. Zeke Nagy started for Aaron Gordon. 14 points, steal and a block. Yeah, solid, but like we don't care. This is not a long-term thing. Well, KCP had three steals, and he's really in that stream territory versus a must-roster player. On the Kings, Sabonis returned. 38 minutes, 31 and 10, five assists. Just a fantastic game. The only blemish is five of eight from the line, but everything else was very, very good. Sensational stuff from Sabonis to return from that thumb injury, and it's safe to say that's a, no problem. So if you added Trey Lyles, who was all right here, if you added Rashawn Holmes, if you added someone else, Alex Len, like obviously... Go and uh, move on from those guys. Holmes played 10 minutes and Len, the best analog they had to replace Sabonis, remember that, he's the best replacement, um, played zero minutes. Malik Monk, that's the guy that I was talking about before when I was talking about Malik Beasley. Like, he went off. And just after I said, I think I'm done with holding him, I think I'm done. And then he goes out and has 33 points with four threes. But again, it's... 33 points on 57% shooting. He was 50% from three. He had nothing else. It's a hot shooting night. And there's just so many of those guys you can rotate in and out. So does this mean, damn, I was wrong to drop him? No. Does it mean, damn, I've got to go grab him? Not necessarily. Maybe you do, because maybe he puts together three or four of these games in a row. But finding out when these players, and I've always going to have Tim Hardaway and Malik Beasley in my head as those sort of analogs. Finding out when they do it is impossible to do. They're just going to be hot and cold and hot and cold. And he's going to play 24, 25 minutes a night. When he gets hot, he plays more. And he was helped by this game by fan of pants Kevin Herter getting into foul trouble. He was shithouse, six points in 18 minutes. Still a hold. Keegan Murray being bad again. You know what we can do with Keegan Murray? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. No, oh, I didn't hit it. Get that garbage out of here. Yeah, piss him off. 5 2 and 1, 29%. Continues to really struggle. And the pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. 8 2 and 2. Not a must roster player. He'll be better than this, but he's not must roster. Neither is Keegan Murray. Both of those guys can sit on your waiver wire, and I think you can feel okay about it. Let's look at the lines of the night. The monstrous does go to the big fella. Alec Berg. The waiver wire line of the night goes to Alec Berg. The young gun of the night goes to the five minute man, Bones Highland, and the dud of the night does go to Malik Beasley. We almost were able to get Lonnie Walker in there, but I have like a 70% advanced metric roster cutoff, and he's at 60. So he doesn't quite get there, unfortunately for Lonnie. Otherwise, he would have hit it, and I would have felt good about it. I feel like I'm just shitting on Lonnie unnecessarily. Apologies to you, Lonnie. Let's look at the top 10 players today. Number one was Burks, followed by DeRozan, Jokic, Durant, Fox, Jim Butler, Lowry Markkinen, Sadiq Bey, Vucevic, and DeAndre Ayton. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Burks at one. We already talked about him and Sadiq Bey as streaming options with the absence, likely, of Killian Hayes. Rui Hachimura, like Alec Burks, hit every shot possible and got a big boost in usage. I don't think he's a must-roster 12-teamer. The five-minute man, Bones Highland at number three. Don't overreact. Dan Gafford, yeah. If he's going to start and play 24 minutes, he's a 12-team league player. Andre Drummond, don't overreact. Caleb Martin's a 14-teamer. Trey Lyles is a 14. Oh, no, probably a 16-teamer. Milk Jerome, um, no, not interested. Uh, Troy Brown, eh, providing some threes for deeper formats for sure. And Pat Beverly, at least moving into 12-team discussions, if not a uh, 14-team league sort of guy. The top 10 players in points leagues today, Giannis at one, then DeRozan, Durant, Jokic, Butler, Zion, Sabonis, Fox, Markkinen, and DeJounte Murray. And the answer to the question earlier on today, who was drafted out of Arizona by the Blazers and last played for the Blazers? It was Rondé Hollis Jefferson. He was drafted by the Blazers and traded to the Nets on a draft day trade. So there you go. Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Guys, that'll do it for us today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.